Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another uh, interview for our Lead the Way uh, crowdfunding campaign. My name is Joseph Graham. I am in uh, the south of England. I'm joined today with Judy Beecher, who is not in the south of England. Uh, she's in sunny America. Um, and Judy has come on board with our uh, immersive VR game. Um, but before we get into that, could you just sort of um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, hello, I'm Judy Beecher. Um, I'm an actress uh, and a filmmaker and a singer songwriter and a writer <laughs> and a producer. Oh my God. <laughs> what don't things. you do? What don't I do? I'm learning guitar. I don't yet play guitar. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I, I work internationally. I, I work here in the States and I also work in Europe um because i have dual nationality so i can work anywhere in europe so i do that i'm on a tv series in france and um yeah that's what i can tell you in a very short <laughs> few words uh so can you tell us a little bit about um what this vr game is and what your role in it is so um the vr game is the immersive uh, world of uh, Oberunda, which is the country which the main character of the film, Lead the Way, that's where he comes from. It's a made up country, but it's where he's from, Oberunda. Oberunda. And um, the virtual reality game is um, gonna have, uh, it's Vrisp with Vrism. So VRISP, uh, it's virtual reality, I have to like, <laughs> virtual reality immersive solution play. And VRISM is virtual reality immersive spatial museum. So the, the, the world that we go into when we go into the game is Oberunda. So it's the country where uh, the main character comes from. And it's kind of a, uh, it's a world of its own. It's a museum of a, of a, of a sort. Um, and my character uh, in the game uh, will take you around this world. So I'll, I'm, I'll lead you around. I'm kind of like the tour guide of this, of Uberunda. <laughs> Uh, and how did you sort of first get involved with the project? Well, I've known Eugene for a long time and um, we are working on other projects as well over over the years um, as an act I'm, as an actress. Um, I've been working with him on different movies and things like that. Cool. Um, we should say the game is still very much in production, um, but if anyone wants to uh, help us out on the Indiegogo site uh, for five dollars you can uh, rent uh, the game once it becomes available and for a hundred dollars you can be in the game if you so please um, and so I suppose Judy um, for most people you are probably best known for your role in another video game called Heavy Rain um, could you just sort of tell people who aren't aware what that was and who you were in that sure it was a it's a it was one of the first uh, games it was on PlayStation um, I, I played the role of Madison Page, which was the lead character in that game. And um, it, it was very, it, it was, you felt like you were going into that you were, your, your, your character, you know, when you become the character, you're in a, re, a real space. It was like a movie. Like you felt like you were really there. And um, every, you had a choice to every scene had five different endings. So it was like a movie, it was like a 20 hour movie because I'm a movie actress, so it was like a 20 hour movie. And you could choose whether the character was going to lie or tell the truth or fall in love or get angry, whatever, you chose the emotion. So each scene that we did had to be shot five different times wow. in different ways. So it was really interesting. And it was made with motion capture, um, body and facial motion capture. I did the facial motion capture and the voice work on it. 
And so it was very, it was, it was very cool. Um, and every, um, everything had to be memorized because you couldn't read like in a normal voiceover, you, you, you know, you do the character and you read it because you're not the, your facial motion capture is not being recorded. But with this game, because you're looking up and you're acting out the scene as if it was a theater piece, it had to be memorized like a theater, except you're acting with no one <laughs> when you're actually doing it. Um, and so it was, it was really fun to do. It was very challenging to do because it was like 150 pages of dialogue, just my own dialogue that had to be memorized. <laughs> um, but it was really fun. Uh, it was a really fun project to work on. And I know a lot of people really love the game. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing reception. Um, actually, sticking with the, the motion capture side of it, I am, um, uh, for people who don't know me, I am at university here in England. Um, and I put a shout out on our university group chat earlier today for anyone who's interested to ask you a question virtually. Um, and a friend of mine, Alex, was very interested to know about the motion capture side of everything about and sort of how that sort of influences your acting choices and everything to do with that. Well, in, with motion capture, you know, you have little dots all over. They put these little dots all over, all over your face. So, um, you know, for me, it, it had to be, I'm, I'm an actor, actor, you know, so it had to be as realistic as possible, you know, so, so I was really, I was playing the part with an imaginary partner and you had captures, you know, all over the, the room where I was in, it was a dark room and with the little captures all over. And the director was in a little booth over there and I was acting with him. He was reading the other parts with me. And, but I had to act this way, you know, out this way because all the cameras were all around me. So he's saying the thing and I had to kind of see my partner, you know, whoever it is that I'm in the scene with and really be real, but yet I'm not, you know, and, you know, sometimes you got to see part of the video of it and most of the time not. So it was very, it was, uh, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard to do, but it was, you know, now that I've done that, I was like, well, I can do anything. If I, if I could do that, I could do anything. <laughs> so it's a good like confidence booster. <laughs> Yeah. And were you uh, surprised by the strong reception that the game had initially? Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was really like the hottest game out there for a while. So um, you said you are predominantly a, a more film and TV based actress. Uh, so how did that sort of first come about that you got involved with a uh, video game and motion capture role? Uh, it was very strange because I had never done anything like that. And they were searching for, they were actually recasting because the um, Jackie Ansley, who did the body, you know, the body, it was her picture in the motion capture. She was a model, not an actor. So they wanted someone who could act <laughs> um, to play the, that, you know, the, to, to be her, to be the role. So um, I, I, I was actually in France at the time. So I auditioned through my agent in France and, and booked it. And so did they put your like head motion capture on her body motion capture? Yeah, so they used all of my facial, my facial features, you know, my facial um, movements, expressions, um, and, and hers, it was her body movements. And I think they had a third person as well that did some of the wow. body as well. That's some of like the stunt things. Wow. Um, so as we were just saying, you are also a, a film and a TV actor. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you just, you have a new movie coming out soon called yes. Tango Shalom, was it? Yes, Tango What's Shalom. <laughs> Yeah, I was produced by, it's, it was produced by Joel Zwick, who did My Big Fat Creek Wedding. Um, and uh, it's doing the festival run right now and winning a lot of awards. It hasn't yet come out where we can all watch it. Um, 
but yeah, it's really fun and it's, it goes really against, you know, what I usually, what I've played before. I, I play a Hasidic rabbi's wife in it. So, uh, and it's about a, a rabbi, a Hasidic rabbi who's having financial problems, who gets a calling to dance the tango. God tells him he has to dance the tango to resolve his problems, but he can't touch a woman that's not his wife because it's against the religion. So he has to go to all the other religions to ask for help, what should he do? So it's about bringing cultures together and people together and, and showing how we're all alike. Did you have to do any dancing for that? A, yes, a little bit. I wasn't, so there was, Karina Smirnoff did the dancing. She's in Dancing with the Stars. So she played the dance instructor. I was his wife who didn't want him to dance. <laughs> so I was very, I wore a wig and no makeup and I was, <laughs> and um, so yes, so we dance a little bit at the end, he and I, in a, in a cute kind of way. <laughs> I was not the tango dancer though. Uh, and was that all uh, produced pre-pandemic? Oh yes. Oh yes, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to do it during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, you have to find a way to dance while remaining two meters apart. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you were also a, a director um, and a, a producer and just a filmmaker in general. What sort of um, projects have you made yourself? Um, I produced and acted in um, a few shorts. I directed a short, I, uh, Only in Paris, which won a whole bunch of awards, a romantic comedy that I got best actress for and best film and best romantic comedy. Um, and uh, I did another film, The Can Can. I had won a little competition in Can and I had to shoot a film during, during the festival, The Can Can. And I'm, I'm directing a documentary right now. Um, the working title is Run Runya, The Kindness of Strangers. And it's about my mom, who was a hidden child during the Holocaust. And she escaped by herself when she was six and a half years old wow. across the French Swiss border to wow. freedom. So I'm, I'm been working on that now and doing a crowdfunding myself <laughs> on it to, to continue on. It's a long journey. Um, wow. Um, the, you said you directed a, a short film. Did you also act in that one as well? Um, I, the, sh the other short film, um, it, that was the Can Can. It was during, we shot it during the festival and during the festival, you never sleep. Um, so I decided I didn't want to, I had written it for myself. Like I always write for myself to be in it. Um, but I, I was like, gosh, do I really want to like worry about having bags under my eyes because I didn't sleep the night before. So I decided to make it um, from my POV. So throughout the whole thing, you never see me, you hear me. And at the very end, you see me and you see what, what had happened. Um, and then I've also just written um, a play. Uh, it's a short play on social justice and it was chosen to, it's going to be, um, performed in June, actually, um, by the Town Street Theater Company online. It'll be on a live performance uh, on, on Zoom in Los Angeles. It's the first number one African American um, theater company. So it's a short play about social justice and wow. racism. And again, because I, 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 like this is very close to my heart is that people start to see each other as people, you know, not as whatever, color, race, religion, you know, disability, this, that, you know, that people are people. So wow. it's my first play I, that I wrote. <laughs> that, it's the first play I wrote, number one, and it's also the first piece I wrote that I don't, I don't act in. It just kind of came through me. So um, I was very excited about that. A lot of different irons in different fires, it seems. Yeah. Is it different, um, right, I've never written a play before. Is it different writing a play to a short film or anything else? I started doing, um, 
I started doing play. I was in a, a over the pandemic, I was in um, a script writing, reading group. And normally I write stuff for, um, I write things for, um, for the film medium. And, but this was a, basically it was a theater play reading group. So I kind of would take whatever I wrote and I would make it into a play version of it. It might've been written as a web series. It might've been written as a, I wrote it as a short. This is something that I'm working on that I'm also shooting that it's more of a short web series. And, but I do it as a play. So that we, she said, okay, you know, next play reading we're doing is gonna be on social justice, go. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I meditated when I write, I, I get into a meditative state when I, Right, and then it just comes through me. So I write books as well, um, spiritual, like channeled books of spiritual success, and um, and it just comes through me. And there's no thought. It just, I just, the whole thing. I just wrote the whole thing in a couple minutes. <laughs> you know, just yeah. You think you'd ever be interested in writing a video game? A video game. Mm. Who knows. I write songs as well, like the same the same way. Who knows, you know? And I'm doing a film as well, right this second, we're writing an, another film we're gonna shoot next week um, because my grand, my uncle just died during the I'm sorry. pandemic. Thank you. And he lived in my grandparents' house, which was all 1950s, like their style, he never changed it. It was like 1950 to 70s, all furniture and the wallpaper and, it's like a complete set of a 1950s house. So we were shooting something for the documentary there and the DP said, let's, we have two weeks, let's write something <laughs> before the house was sold already. So we want to try to get, shoot a, a, a really fun short film in there that takes place in the 1950s. So that's what we're working on right now. We wrote, the, we wrote it already and uh, the last few days and we're going to shoot it. Well, the best of luck with all of that. Um, uh, you mentioned um, before we started recording this that you're, you've been um, working on a French television series, I believe. Yeah, so I was on a show called uh, La Garçon, Boyish, uh, which is a period piece. It takes place in uh, 1919. And uh, it's the producers of, I don't know if you've heard of Call My Agent. The show is that Call a Netflix My show? It's about, it's about an a agency, like an... Uh, like a talent agency in France. So it's the same producers that did this, but this takes place in 1919, right after World War I. And it's about a girl who um, pretends to be a guy, she pretends to be her brother to solve like who murdered her father. And she goes into the police department and she pretends to be a guy. And I play kind of a Marlene, it's opposite of my Tango Shalom character. <laughs> I'm like a Marlena Dietrich type of character who um, very wealthy American bisexual who throws these, the whole, the series kind of revolves around my house, <laughs> like where I throw these crazy parties, political parties. So, so it's, it's an interesting part. So it was really fun to play. And was that also filmed pre-pandemic? Right pre-pandemic. So I was in France finishing like the voice part of it in February. And then the pandemic what hit right, it was right there. I flew from there to LA, came back to New York and, and boom, lockdown. Wow. <laughs> so I was traveling a lot right before. Wow. Yeah, and it came out in September. The series. And is there, are there plans for a second series? I don't know. I don't know. I'm up. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm up for something now. Uh, mm. uh, there as well. I'm, so I'm not going <laughs> to, no, not going to say anything, <laughs> but just. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and then just, um, I think the other thing that kind of uh, screams out from your very impressive uh, resume is you had a role in Taken 3, I believe. Yes, I was. Yes, I did. I was in Taken 3. That was really fun to shoot. I actually shot it in France. 
because Taken 3 was shot in three different countries. So uh, all pretending to be the United States. <laughs> so for, for tax reasons. But yes, I, I did. I was in Taken 3 and it was very fun to be in. Wonderful. Um, I think that was all the questions I had uh, to ask you here today. Um, I think we should just finish by just um, reminding people about the VR game, um, which is to as a companion piece, I think, to the film Lead the Way. Um, as we said, the VR game Judy will be in um, when it's eventually comes out and is made. Um, and so if you want to help support that, then uh, you can uh, go to our Indiegogo page and uh, donate how much money you can. Uh, $5 will get you, uh, will let you rent the game when it is, uh, eventually comes out. And if you want to be in the game, that's one of our $100 perks. So uh, Judy Beecher, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we'll see everyone next time. Please support us. <laughs>